Hi guys and uh, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a little package that came from Banggood. So this is a courtesy of Banggood, but I'm not going to be nice. I'm just gonna actually review it like every other piece I've been reviewing. So this is the Star F3S flight controller and ESC and a PDB all in one. So this is a pretty interesting one actually. So it does have a current sensor as we could see here. And let's just take quick, quickly, just take a look at what it comes with and then we can go to the specifications. And then we can kind of, we will, we, I'm gonna try to hijack the signal pin since these built-in ESCs like the ASCARD card kind of things going are very difficult to actually hijack the signal and I could run my script and inject my script into it so we could test it for noise. So we're just gonna quickly go over it and just do a little basic testing and then um, actually put it on a quad and test it on the quad. So that'll be the official testing of this. But we'll, I'll try to do my best with this guy right now. So let's take a look at the stuff it comes with. You get just some nylon standoffs. You don't get any rubber dampeners and just, uh, just a couple nylon screws and spacers. And then you get your XT60 connector, which is awesome. Matek, you should put some XT60 connector with your stuff also. But yeah, anyways. <clears throat> so this is a 30 amp ESC and it is rocking a bb2 chip and the bb2 chip which means it could run dshot 600 out of the box which is awesome and we are rocking the f3 flight controller f3 flight controller board ic whatever you want to call it so this does come in f4 version but they've sent me the f3 and the f3 is plenty good i don't think i don't like the f4s of these kinds of things because they're too sensitive and they just the gyros just cause a lot of problems so the f3 for this guy i think is actually very good um you know, I think I'm actually going to put them on a 3-inch build, and then we're going to test them there. I think it'll be pretty interesting on my Jeb 130X. That'll be pretty fun, actually. All right, so let's go over the specifications. Right here we have, uh, it's a 4-in-1 ESC, and the continuous current is rated for 30 amp. Burst is 35 amp for 10 seconds. Uh, it can take a 2 to a 4S LiPo. It has a 5-volt regulator at 1 amp, so I don't recommend uh, exceeding 1.75 amps on it and it is programmable as they say it does have an osd and a current sensor we just saw those and our input voltage is 2 to 4s so we've already mentioned that and what else do we have here it's a bb2 chip and we are rocking d shot 600 on this guy and the gyro is the mpu 6000 so that that's good that's good i mean you're not gonna have a lot of problem with oscillations on this guy um which is very good so let me rip this apart and take a look at the components on it. All right, guys, so just stripping it apart, actually, I think it does have some conformal coding on it to actually protect it, which is actually pretty cool if they're doing the same thing as, um, yeah, I think, yeah, they do, yeah, they do. So that's pretty cool, that's, that's, that's new from Racer Star, that's pretty awesome, actually. All right, so let's take a look at the pads and the layout so we do have our battery terminals here we got our positive and minus which is clearly labeled our arrow so this would go in like this and let's check the esc layout we have one two three four that's perfect that's perfect beta flight so you could just stick it right in however this is very bad this is going to be in the front so it's going to be a bit of a pain to actually stick your usb in there but i mean i guess that's okay so let's take a look here here we have our ground, we have video out, video in, 5 volt, another 5 volt, and we have our S bus. And what is this, ground? Why does it look like that? I think it's the confirm, I don't know, it's strange. It, it, it's a pad though, but on the camera it looks like it has solder on it. And here we have another ground. So that's good. Uh, what else do we have here? Do we have any RX, TX, anything? Well, that's really it, really. So it's just that simple. There's nothing much to it. So I don't know if this is these two. These two are probably ground, yeah. And this is a S bus. Yeah, that makes sense. Five volt ground, five volt ground. Video in, video out, ground. Okay. So uh, if you're using a VTX that, well, you're gonna have to run your VTX straight from the battery pads. So uh, that can introduce noise depending on your setup and your ESCs and if it does maybe it's pretty simple I mean if you don't have such a very power hungry build I think this guy could handle it plus look at these these are pretty fat capacitors so that that's a very good clear that's a very good sign however I wish they would have just added maybe I don't know like two more on each side so right now it's what is this five so if it would have been seven seven I think we could have had a pretty 
Well, I, I still don't know. I have not tested it, but I th it, and the more the better on these kinds of boards. However, everything is pretty much spaced out, and we do have our boot. It's right there. So those are that's going to be our boot pins. And let's move this guy. Okay, we get it. Quality check passed, and this is going to be another quality check test here. In my house. All right, we'll remove it later. All right, so I'm going to prepare it for. Um, just a simple test like I did with the Asgard. I will try to hijack the signal here somewhere and see if we can actually run our skip, script through it and to actually really test it through the oscilloscope. And if not, then we're anyways, I'm going to have this built maybe today on the uh, JEP 130X, which is a three inch, and then we could actually test it. And it should be good. I mean, it looks good. It looks promising. It looks clean. Um, it's like what fifty dollars, so and it's an F three. I'll do like the F three boards better than the F fours. I mean, just it's just less problems. Um, it's just my personal opinion. I still love the F four boards. I use them. I'm using them on my favorite quads now, but um, I just I just like them because they just feel more reliable. Maybe that's the word. So yeah. Oh yeah, you guys are gonna give me shit for this, but I had to remove those like that. So yeah. Anyways, all right, let's take it on the bench. Let's get started. Alright guys, so I could not hijack the signal pin to actually run it through my noise script. So what I had to do is actually just do the noise testing manually, which is just play with the motors up and down very hard and try to simulate the noise script, but it's almost impossible. However, I did manage to get the OSD to flicker a little bit, and I did see some noise when I went frame by frame. And that is 100% to be expected on all boards with ESC built on board. So for $50, what do you get? You get an OSD, 4-in-1 ESC, some noise. Actually, it's not as bad as a DYSF4, believe it or not. I'm just very impressed. So this is very good when you compare the DYSF4 with its ESCs. So, um, yeah. Uh, however, this is going to need a little bit of work. A little bit of work is possibly, possibly maximum two low ESR capacitors. What you can do is you can start with one on the battery terminals, like a 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor or a thousand. I would stick a thousand just to be safe. And if you do still notice possible noise and OSD flickers, then you get a small, I don't know, 16 volt low ESR capacitor and stick it on the five volt rails. And that should literally just clean this right up. However, I don't recommend using this with something like above 2205 motors. So, you know, you could push it to 2206, 2207, but I would stick to DYS motors because they're less noisy. So a 2207 motor is less noisy than the 2205S from Emacs. So um, stick to motors with not strong magnets. So if you connected, let's say, Brother Hobby Returner R4s or the Hyperlite V4s, you will notice you might have some noticeable noise which will bug you like crazy. So overall, what I am actually planning on doing this is actually maybe either making a four inch quad or a three inch quad and setting this up because I don't, it has everything. So, and it's, you know, to fix it up, it's not, it's not bad at all. I mean, it's actually, I think it's gonna be very flyable and very good to be honest. So I'm very excited for this one. Um, that's all I could really say right now. So if anybody's used it or has any experience with it, please leave a comment down below and let me know how that went for you. Other than that, I see it's gonna be a pretty okay board. It might need some modifications, but they're not big modifications, nothing too scary. Unlike the DYSF4, that's for sure. And um, it seems very good. So uh, hopefully this will be a good one. I I'm, I'm, have high hopes for this. So once I build it and test it, I'll know for sure. And that's all I could really say right now. So I hope it helped someone out there and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys. Take care.